It's a wonderful day on the patio for more reasons than just the weather. One of the biggest reasons is that you are here. So thank you so much for clicking on this video. I also have two orchids that are showing promising signs that I am given a second chance. Well, in this case here would be a fourth chance. <laughs> but my Cattleya luminosa is also in dire straits. And if I don't do a setup change pronto, we won't have her in the collection for that much longer. So I'm gonna try and do this in this video all in one without making it a long drawn out saga. Let's change the setup and then look forward to a bright and blooming full future. <laughs> Catlian, the little fairy, has taught me a lot in the past years about semi-hydroponics, lecker and self-watering, any which way you want to look at it, but the evaporative cooling effect of LECA when it comes to the semi-hydroponic setup. Now, I have several other Catlianthas in my collection that came after this orchid, and they pretty much followed suit. However, it was this orchid that made me recognize over years and years of being able to keep changing the lecker ratio in the pot to see if that was my mistake, but it wasn't. And credit to this orchid, she is still alive because she is a vigorous little hybrid and she's as stubborn as I am. So that worked well in our favor. However, my Zagarig Wax African Beauty, also a cat Leanthid, did not appreciate the experimenting with the Lekka ratio. And instead of five years, as with this orchid, she only gave me grace three years. And she is also in lava rock now, just to get her to recover because experimentation nation, we're done. We are going to get these orchids back up to speed. And it's because of the little fairy here that I know my Luminosa is in dire straits if I don't do something different. Now, normally I would soak with calcium, magnesium and seaweed, but my suspicions here are the following. I don't have viable roots in this pot, so I wasn't gonna waste the product. <laughs> There's no point in putting CalMag and seaweed into a pot of dead roots. If she proves me wrong and I do have some live roots, which is possible, let me tell you that they are going to fail very, very quickly once she goes into lava rock. It's the way things are. Not all bifoliates are fussy, but I think out of all the bifoliate candidates, uh, Catlianthes are up there with being quite, let's say, unforgiving. <laughs> let's put it that way. So our suspicions were correct. Catlianthe has more dead roots than what I would consider alive. But because her new growth is already starting with a new root, now's the time to go in. Now, what do I expect out of this orchid by doing what I'm doing now, changing the media? I'm expecting that this new growth, if it reaches the previous size, like this one, even though it's way smaller than what she's capable of, if this growth reaches that size, we're gonna be okay. I'll be very, very happy. If the growth chooses to get any larger than that, even better. <laughs> and another thing I'm expecting is that if she tries to bloom in the winter, which she did with this growth right here, but I stopped the blooming in its tracks. No way, Jose. I'm just checking to see if that was scale, but those are spider webs. She doesn't have spider mites, so... That is weird. I'm going to get some garlic alcohol and deal with that at the end. But if she wants to then bloom, I will also stop the blooming so that this orchid can actually recover because that's what this is all about. At least it could be 2025, the winter of, before we see more blooms from her. Oh, and they're beautiful blooms. It's beautiful, bright yellow, just what you need in the middle of the dark winter days with that little blush of red, pink, it's, it's gorgeous. They come in clusters as Catlianthas do, and they have a beautiful fragrance. So this orchid, I, it's testament, I tell you. Thankfully, she is still around. She's nothing, let's say, uber-duber special in the sense of wow, rare, 
exotic. No, she's just one of them hybrids that if you get the culture right, she blooms like clockwork, grows like clockwork. You can set your time, your months. You know exactly what she's going to do next and when, which makes for great repotting scheduling as well, if that is necessary. If you were to grow her in, for example, just bark. Woo, look at that. Got to be a little bit more vigilant. Nice. If you were to grow her in bark, then of course that is a wet dry cycle. And let me just say, when in active growth, Catlianthes want their water. I shall be cleaning my hands. I shall be cleaning the root system. And because she has some roots, no, they look fine. They are not. So we're not going to be as radical or should we? Because you see, lava rock is very unforgiving when it comes to repotting. However, I'm not considering to repot this orchid for another two years. Still, I'm trying to think ahead with that. And hmm, old roots would be a great buffer when it comes to repotting because of course, new roots would attach to the old roots that are left in the pot. Lava rock is not going to degrade. So whatever hmm, degrading, going over, whatever it is that these old roots would do in the pot, they wouldn't exactly hurt the climate of the pot. So it might be a good idea to leave some of the old roots on just to have a buffer, some kind of grace when it comes to repotting in two years. And you know what? When I say two years, I might just leave it for three years, depending on how she's going to perform. But I also say when it comes to repotting, because it's going to be all right. Famous last words, right? In the orchid hobby, it's going to be all right. The minute we show confidence, the minute we become to the point that we know what we're doing, boom, the orchid is going to say, hold my beer. I'm going to teach you a lesson. <laughs> you are wrong. No, I wouldn't be telling you all this if I wasn't confident, but there's always that little 1%, right? Okay, so in true Figaro style, I'm just going to go and take like 50% of the old root system off. Because even though they look pale, as if they were to be good. Now this one here, this one is still good. Let me bring you in a little bit closer. This one is still firm. But even though this one right here looks pale, it is completely soft. There's nothing to it anymore. There is a firm one in there, so we might as well be mindful of that. For the time being, yes, I'm going to be very mindful of every root that she still has that is functioning until the new roots that are growing are going to take over. Everything does help and count, even though they are not going to last very long in the lava rock. Of course, I'm going to keep that lava rock nice and damp over a long period of time, seeing as we are in that time of year where humidity is very low, but still. This is a complete change of environment. Now, let me talk about this evaporative cooling, which can also, you know, freak out a lot of people who don't really want to get into LECA. Semi-hydroponics can be done in many other ways with other media as well. But let me talk about this evaporative cooling. That is always the last little bit where people might say, yeah, I'm going to shy away from that. That's not for me. Evaporative cooling only happens, let's say, in my climate, with my environment, when the temperature of the ambient air goes much, much lower than what the orchid actually likes if the culture were to be 100%. So evaporative cooling would have no issues in my climate if I kept the root ball temperature, let's say, at 20 degrees Celsius. It would absolutely adore that. The roots wouldn't fail just because it's in a very wet environment. Another thing I could also do, for example, to avoid evaporative cooling is put her into a very large pot, lecker all around her, orchid in the middle, and then everything that is excess and around will act as insulation. That can be done as well. And I have not experimented with that because of lack of space in my grow space during the winter months. But for the sake of insulation, taking a pot that is way too excessive for what the orchid actually requires it is absolutely possible when it comes to semi-hydroponics and inorganic media. The orchid will grow into the pot anyway. But the advantage is if your temperatures are too cold during the winter for this kind of a setup, but you want to do it anyway, you have to have that extra size 
so that you get the insulation and nothing really comes that close to the root ball. Trust me, if I had the space, I would do just that. I would practice what I preach and I would be confident things would be just fine, even if my ambient air temperatures go down to 14 degrees Celsius. So that's all we're going to do with this. We'll get the Luminosa out next. I'm just taking out the little straggler roots that would be peeking up over the edge anyway. Alrighty, she, in the meantime, can soak in the water that is in her older pot, just for the time being. Because once again, what I'm trying to do is at least maintain the little that I have alive left, keep that going until such a time as the new root system is able to take over. Okay, Luminosa. Luminosa was fantastic for two years in my winter conditions and it was only in the winter of 22-23 she rapidly lost all her leaves. So that root system is also not very happy in there and that would be an understatement but she is growing a new growth and of course new roots and that's why we're doing it right now. These roots are precious, so we'll make sure that we get the lecker off it. And it seems to be that she was busy before, so we have some roots there, but we also have a lot of give in the back. So that's where we're going to focus our squeezy squeezy. Because if there is viable roots in the front, I'd like her to have as many of them left as possible. And my intention is to put her, oh, broken pot now as well. <laughs> So that's good. That was unexpected, but we'll deal with it. It's awesome. She's going into lava rock C or C, even if I have more viable roots in this pot than I anticipated. And we're just gonna reset this whole orchid. So what was holding her back was the microfiber. Not so much viable roots. Um, yeah, this one is a bit viable. Oh, and Fern roots, I shall relieve you. Got to be careful. There are some viable ones up here. Now the fern roots weren't the problem. Same problem with this one when it comes to my winter temperatures and the evaporative cooling. Same thing could be applied, an oversized pot and create that insulation buffer. We're not going to do that. And that's why these two are being done in the same video. Now she is so much weaker than the Catlianthus. Sorry about my static commentary, but I'm finding some viable roots and I wasn't expecting that. That's positive. Again, they probably won't last very long. She is much weaker than the Catlianthus, so she is going to need a lot more time to get going again. Oh wow, this is gonna be so satisfying to get all this off of her. My goodness. If anybody wants to grow ferns in a dry climate, choose semi-hydroponics. You can tell they absolutely loved it. And yes, I've been weeding her year in, year out. That's why there's not that much of the maidenhair foliage at the top. During the summer, normally I let my maidenhair fern grow just because it's another humidity buffer for me and my climate. But I do make sure that when we get into the winter months, all that is dealt with and removed. And now it's definitely going to be removed. I can't tell you how satisfying this is. <laughs> That's quite some maidenhair fern in there. Good grief. Oh, here comes the best part when we find a chunk. Oh, so satisfying. Oh, hello. Weak orchid, enter scale. We will deal with that. Now I'm much more radical with this root system in getting the old roots off because of the maidenhair fern. If the maidenhair fern hadn't been that predominant, I wouldn't care much, but I want it gone. And see, they will always grow back. And that's really not a problem. Just while we're at it, this is giving me good vibes. Let's snip our little seedling bulbs off. Let's get our garlic alcohol while we can see what we're doing, because if I spray this down, I can't see the scale anymore. Just 
Just being mindful to keep it away from the root tips. Now that'll do for now. And of course, she's under pest observation now and I shall repeat this every three days, just with the paintbrush though. I'm not gonna mist her until the roots aren't well and truly established and going down into the lava rock. We're gonna be extremely careful. Hey, would you do me a solid? If you've already found some information or had a light bulb moment throughout this video, would you please give this video a like? Help me out when getting into the algorithm share this video out to more people that you may know that could benefit from it and if you have not subscribed that would be the hat trick complete i would really appreciate that support thank you so so much i would love to mist all that gunk off her base but garlic alcohol is more important all right let's get them into their fresh pots and we're going to do that in the shade because when i concentrate to put the lava rock back in and around the orchid securing her etc i may not be watching the screen and then if the camera overheats that's it <laughs> no footage okay now there is no wicking efficacy when it comes to large lava rock and a larger pot size so what i'm not doing here is lava rock and self-watering semi-hydroponics i'm using the lava rock as media for the orchid to grow onto to be able to keep her a little bit drier during the winter as well as avoid the evaporative cooling because lava rock does not have those characteristics it'll be up to me to flush the pots to keep the humidity levels high the only reason the setup is the way it is with my microfibers is because i want the lava rock to stay as damp as possible until the orchid is not able to take up any nutrients all we're giving is plain water so the reservoirs here are mainly serving as the humidity source you see, for my Catliantha little fairy, I am going up two pot sizes because she was in a 15 before, now she's going up to a 20. That to me is two pot sizes where I'm coming from. The intent being to not disturb the orchid for as long as possible so that she can recover. No more nonsense, stressful repots. That is the plan. And having a larger pot will give us that opportunity and i hear you if you listen to what i said before about larger pots the insulation making sure the orchid is in the middle etc why am i doing a larger pot with lava rock as opposed to doing the insulation with the lacquer as i recommended earlier the answer to that is the fact that this pot is not big enough in order for that insulation effect to kick in it would have to be maybe one size higher if not two and that's why i cannot use what i recommended earlier if you want to get insulation to work during the colder months of the year for the root system to then not cool down unfortunately but anyway it's going to be super interesting for me and hopefully for you if you have subscribed to my channel to watch the progress of these orchids and how they will recover I want her tied up and secure before I put the lava rock in. We have an imposter. <laughs> there are so many air gaps in and underneath. My intention is not to molly coddle the older roots that are going to fail anyway. I'm going to leave them nicely submerged in water for a day but the air gaps everything is going to hopefully then be an assistance when it comes to repotting and you can see well i did cut back bulbs off back in the day we have plenty of years of growth in this pot and just to reiterate the coming months it's all about flushing until the new roots are able to do their job Okay, let's do the same thing with our Luminosa. Her pot size stays the same. The reason being, she's not that fast a grower. One growth per year, and we've got plenty of space for her to do that for many, many years. But I do need my support. Yes, I'm being very picky about the height. I want her lower, and while we have still the chance to get that right, we have to respect her current status quo and get it done. No regrets afterwards. I'm really hoping I didn't affect that root tip. 
It's looking dodgy to me. That would be super annoying. This orchid only grows about two, maybe three roots per new growth. Mm. It doesn't look good though. So I'm just gonna make a verbal note of that. That we have probably damaged, we, I say we because you know, you're included here, but I have probably damaged that root tip. It may stop altogether. And you can also see that she's a very reluctant brancher. Now, that could be because of the Leca media. She might surprise us and say, finally, this lady got it right. Now I'm going to branch a little bit more vigorously. But from what I can see right now, she is not a generous brancher. So this mistake with that root tip could be vital. Like I said at the beginning of the video, it's a great day on the patio. <laughs> My camera didn't overheat either. My orchids are all nice and clean, and I'm confident that they are going to be absolutely fine this coming winter. That takes a load off my shoulders. And not only that, it actually eliminates another level of anxiety. So we can take the anxiety o meter and dial it down a bit because these two orchids will be fine <sighs> during the winter of 2023 and 24. I don't want to think about it, but I have to think about it. And that is what is also part and parcel of planning ahead. Hope you found some information that was useful to you, that you can apply in your collection. If you have any questions, if I didn't finish a train of thought, please, please address that in the comments. Even if you found this video was pretty self-explanatory and you just enjoyed watching it. Love hearing from you. I want to say thank you so, so much for watching. Have yourself a wonderful day on that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Oh, did you think I would forget? <laughs> Take care. Bye.